Hello, so good morning. My name is Ian and I'm starting a YouTube channel to help people with H2 chemistry and address some of the common misconceptions uh, in H2 chemistry during this COVID-19 season where I know that most of you would be uh, at home doing home-based learning and thus may be feeling a bit frustrated and not being able to understand some concepts uh, taught through these home-based learning platforms but yet uh, facing difficulty in seeking how to clarify these concepts and solidify your understanding. So a bit about me first, I am a top student from Raffles Institution, topping the cohort in 2016 and 2017. I also won a gold medal in the Singapore Chemistry Olympiad in 2018 and was awarded the Lee Kuan Yew Award for Mathematics and Science as well in the same year. I was also the top in H2 Chemistry scoring 92% and top in H2 Physics in the 2019 preliminary exams in my school. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, my Chemistry Olympiad Award and I scored uh, 90 rank points for A-levels last year. So a bit about chemistry first. So chemistry is a bit like a pyramid. So it is built up from foundational understanding, which is basically the concepts in, uh, that we often think is think to be physics, for example, electrostatics, quantum mechanics. And then it slowly built up to larger and larger scales. For example, larger, a larger scale from the submolecular level will be the molecular level where we learn about reaction mechanisms. And another level higher will be uh, more macroscopic observations, for example, chemical energetics, right? The energy that is absorbed or released in a reaction, also reaction kinetics. And so uh, for H2 chemistry, actually, um, chemistry can be thought of like a ladder, building up from the most fundamental, for example, the concept of matter and measurements and uh, stoichiometry, for example, and building up to the idea of atoms and molecules, how atoms come together to form molecules and uh, chemical formulas and how to write equations. After that, you will learn ab about atomic structure, right? And from the atomic structure of atoms, you have a clearer understanding of how chemical bonding works. And from chemical bonding, we can understand more about molecular structure. And from there on, we get more and more insights into reactions and the macroscopic properties of reactions, for example, energetics and kinetics. So the H2 chemistry syllabus com combines both memorization and understanding. So I wouldn't like be like some people and say, oh, if you understand, you don't have to memorize. No, to score well, to score uh, better than a B, you definitely need to memorize. So there are two types of memorizations in my opinion. One is hard memorization and one is smart memorization. So an example of hard memorization would be, for example, um, if you were to uh, memorize everything in the lecture notes. So if you were to memorize sentence, every single sentence in the lecture notes, memorize all the diagram, figure 1, figure 2, figure 3, and go into the exam hall, unfortunately, I think that you, you may still score pretty decently, but I think it is simply a waste of time. Why? Because H2 chemistry now is moving away from road learning, and it has been for the past few decades, and going into more application of knowledge. So as you probably know, in paper 2 or even paper and paper 3, there are many questions where actually they require you to apply your chemical understanding in new, for new reactions that maybe you have not seen before. That's why uh, for memorization, I recommend smart memorization, which is to memorize answering techniques. So for example, you can memorize the answering technique for how to memorize, uh, sorry, for how to answer uh, questions related to delocalization of electrons. So uh, delocalization or resonance questions. Uh, for example, I devised for myself a three-step method to answer any question of organic chemistry that is related to delocalization and resonance. So the first step would be to identify the orbitals uh, or electron clouds which actually overlap the second will be to uh, state that delocalization of electrons occur and the third step would be to uh, explain the effect that arises from this delocalization so it could be that the lone pair is uh, less able for donation, thus making uh, phenylamine a poorer base. 
It can be that there is partial double bond character, thus making a halogeno a rinse, not susceptible for nucleophilic substitution. Or it also could be a general stabilization and dispersal of a charge, resulting in stabilization of a particular carbocation. And so this is what I mean by smart memorization, because this question on delocalization and resonance, right, always comes up in almost every single examination. So memorizing stepwise answering techniques will certainly help you to secure every single last mark wherever such uh, common question types arises. So, but of course, there needs to be understanding as well. And I call this understanding uh, uh, to be in the form of two different levels. So the first will be the conceptual understanding. So most of you will have this conceptual understanding uh, after sitting through the lecture. So another way to describe conceptual understanding is basically understanding what you read in the lecture notes. But the next level of understanding will be the ability to understand uh, when you you don't see the lecture notes, you just see the heading of the topic and you're able to uh, say what this topic includes. So uh, this is a more uh, abstract kind of uh, understanding and you can test it by drawing mind maps, closed book mind maps for the topic. And then the third level of understanding, which is the last and most important level when it comes to scoring well for examinations, will be applicational understanding. So you are able to apply these concepts, you understand it so thoroughly that even when a new scenario applies, uh, occurs, you can apply the same concept. For example, you can understand the idea of nucleophilicity and uh, electrophilicity so well that even when you are given a new reaction, you are able to identify which is the electrophile, which is the nucleophile, and propose a reaction mechanism based only on a few simple prompts that the question gives you. So I personally have a few recommendations for uh, students when it comes to studying for H2 chemistry. So very important is that unlike in secondary school where maybe you can like chill last minute to memorize and just vomit everything out in the exam. Uh, that is possible in secondary school and O-level because the questions there, they are more testing on the uh, conceptual understanding and more of like more susceptible to, road, to, to scoring based on road learning methods. However, that's not true for the A-level. A-level is much more applicational in nature. So what you have to do, uh, in my opinion, uh, this is just the method that works for me, is uh, firstly, very important, pay attention during lectures. So uh, if school resumes soon, don't skip lectures. And for home-based learning, definitely you have to review every single lecture. Why? Because if you are not going to pay attention in the lecture, you have to read the notes eventually when um, the exams come, right? And then you realize that you don't understand the notes. Then you go back to uh, listen to a lecture. So yeah, spending twice the amount of time, right? Isn't that so unproductive? So pay attention to lectures and read your notes. After the lecture, to consolidate your learning, they say that the uh, if you read something once, you only retain it for a few days. You read it twice, you retain it for a few months. Uh, you read it three or more times, you retain it for even longer period of time. So the second is to practice. Practice, but practice open book. So instead of rereading the notes many, many times, just highlighting it over and over again, I, I suggest that you practice uh, questions, for uh, topical questions, while having the notes for that topic, the lecture notes, open in front of you. So at the same time, while you are practicing, you're also rereading the notes as well. So that kills two birds with one stone. Then lastly is to practice closed book. And before the exam, before the exam, uh, come up with a uh, answering technique notes. So uh, af after practicing sufficiently uh, long, and that is why practice is so important, you will tend to realize what kind of uh, questions always come out as well as what the answering method should be for these questions. And uh, these answering techniques can be both for both qualitative, which is like descriptive questions, and quantitative, which is calculations question. Right? Calculation questions can also have a certain step. For example, especially you see this very often in reaction kinetics, Right for the clock reaction and also for the continuous method, there are certain uh, methods, uh, step by step methods for you to arrive at the eventual rate equation. So uh, that's all for today's video, and I hope that all of you will stay healthy, stay safe, and study hard for H two chemistry.